the members of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, believing that men of similar ideas of fellowship should bind themselves together in order to form a more perfect union among college men, to promote the principles of manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift, to further brotherly love and fraternal spirit within the organization, to protect the sanctity of the home and the chastity of woman, do and act and establish this constitution and accompanying bylaws for the governance of its members. The purpose of the fraternity shall be to bring about a union of college men of similar high ideals of scholarship and manhood in order to stimulate the attainment of ideals and ambitions of its members, to disseminate and inculcate those ideals among those with whom its members come in contact, to cooperate with the schools where its chapters may be located in fostering these ideals, to occupy a progressive, helpful, and constructive place in the civic and political life of the community and of the nation, to prepare its members for greater usefulness in the causes of humanity, freedom, and dignity of the individual, to aid downtrodden humanity in its effort to achieve higher social, economic, and intellectual status. Who were these men who established the first national Greek letter fraternity at a Negro institution of higher learning? Who were these pioneers who laid the foundation for an organization which has grown to one of the largest black fraternities in America with a membership of over 100,000 and which operates chapters in over 500 cities throughout the United States, Europe, Africa, and Asia? Dr. Ernest E. Just, born in Charleston, South Carolina in 1883, is known for many outstanding achievements during the formative years of the 20th century. Professionally, he occupied an eminent place as a scientist and researcher. However, he is known to all Omega men as being the faculty advisor who in the early 1900s provided invaluable advice to three young undergraduates who were determined to organize a fraternity which could serve the cultural and social needs of students on the Howard University campus. Omega's organizers were three students in the College of Liberal Arts. Edgar A. Love was the 20-year-old son of a Methodist minister and a graduate of Morgan Academy in 1909. He was a sophomore preparing for the ministry. Oscar J. Cooper was the 21-year-old son of a Treasury Department employee in Washington. He also graduated in 1909 from Morgan Academy in Baltimore. Cooper was a junior who was completing the prerequisites for admission to the College of Medicine. Frank Coleman was also a 21-year-old junior who had graduated from M Street, which is now Dunbar High School in Washington. Coleman had graduated with honors, and his interest lay in science. Their dedication to the formation of a fraternity led them to Dr. Just, and the rest is history. On Friday evening, November 17, 1911, the Omega Psi Phi fraternity was born. The name was decided upon. Also the motto, friendship is essential to the soul. And the four cardinal principles of manhood, emphasizing courage and commitment through deeds. Scholarship, the pursuit of excellence and development of personal philosophy and goals. Perseverance, striving against all odds in the pursuit of right. Uplift, caring for others by sharing your strength. The Omega Men have influenced the lives of thousands of American citizens, both black and white. From 1911 until today, the Omega Sci-Fi fraternity has grown from three college students and a faculty advisor to a brotherhood composed of thousands of men dedicated to the cardinal principles of manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. One of the things that you have to really be um, proud about is the fact that what they did to establish fraternity and its tumultuous time for us as people. I'm looking back 
at the ties of the attorney and the military. They were some visionary young men. I, I would I would say that they were they were visionary, and in terms of knowing the significance of uh, young men coming together to support each other. Okay, and 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 having someone with whom they could communicate uh, on a, a relatively uh, equal plane of communication. You know, and I, and I think that's important. Is, uh, this whole idea of knowing that people need somebody that they can talk to. You know, and again, that's where I get this. The, the friendship is is essential to the soul. And, you know, and I think that uh, uh, the, the manhood that's involved in us is this whole issue that allows us to also speak to each other respectfully. I, um, you know, from my early days, I, I, I understood very clearly that these uh, three students with their advisor, uh, founders, were, um, you know, they, they they were trying to do something spectacular at a very difficult time. If you go back to the 1911, I mean, that was not any, and then they, 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 they grew right on up uh, through the World War I time, through World War II. Um, it was not easy what they did, and so I have great admiration for them. And to be a scholar during that time as well, and then to, and, and, and Few of them lived to see the fraternity grow, uh, and of course the growth, you know, continues. But uh, I have the utmost, and I hold them in the highest esteem uh, for what they, for what they got started in a very, very difficult time in this, in the, in the history of this country. Notwithstanding the history of, um, you know, Black America or at that time, um, Negroes in America. So, you know, to end it, I would say I, I, um, I mean, one of the things that struck me was the, um, what the founders went through in order to get us where we are today. So I died. You know, I, I, with the experience that I've had with, in the chapter, and, uh, going about with the brothers. I think, I think it's an outstanding group. I mean, uh, well, they're just, they're just good people.